Okay, yeah. Um, yeah, it's, I'm replying back to BR Tidwell. Uh, yeah, I, so I'm fine with keeping it going as long as he wants to. Um, first thing I want to touch on, uh, both, uh, I, I, I just want to correct something he said. Both Ubuntu and PC Linux use Synaptic. It's, they use the same package manager. Uh, the difference is the way they've tweaked it. Um, which, you know, arguably is uh, a school of thought. And, and that comes down to one of Linux's real strengths that a lot of people consider their weakness. It considered to be a weakness. It's argued by a lot of people that, you know, Linux is tearing itself apart because things are different from one distro to another. And that's true. You know, some distros just have things like the package manager or the desktop. You know, just as it came, they did no tweaks, no refinements. They did nothing to optimize it for the way they're wanting to run their Linux operating system. Uh, whereas once those customizations start coming, it, it's they become night and day. It's things are different. You know, where you don't realize it's the same thing. Like it's he made the comment, like, I prefer Synaptic, which is why I never used the, really use PC Linux, because I prefer Synaptic Package Manager. PC Linux is using the Synaptic Package Manager. They've just tweaked it differently than Ubuntu did. Uh, the other thing I want to comment on, and I'd like to get a response back from anyone, including him, on, on this, uh, the comments that have been developing on my video over here have been pointing out uh, a, you know, a little bit of a rub uh, in the community. For those of you who don't know, Linux has within it its own little, I, I don't want to say it's a feud, I don't want to say it's a war, its own little microchasm of the PC versus Mac thing, you know, the it's in the PC versus Mac thing, it's Apple versus everyone else. Inside the Linux community, and there are others. There's, um, like, let me pull them up so I name them right. You know, there's, you know, there's Xface, there's XLDE, and, you know, then there's GNOME and KDE. There's also E17. There's many different desktop environments. And the threads that have been developing in mine is there's a lot of people going, you know, I prefer GNOME. I, I don't like KDE. I find KDE hard. Or they say, I find KDE slow. Uh, as far as KDE being slow, uh, that has all to do with how well the distro optimizes it. I have seen GNOME be far slower than KDE and vice versa. It just depends how the OS chose to tweak it. I think Ubuntu and Ubuntu-based distros did a pretty good job of tweaking GNOME. Uh, and that's one thing you want to look into when you're looking into your distro. What's their primary desktop? Because there's versions of Ubuntu that don't have GNOME. You know, Kubuntu being probably the most well known. It's it's Ubuntu with KDE. But because Ubuntu is really a GNOME distro, Kubuntu is still Ubuntu. It's it's not as welcoming to somebody who really prefers the KDE style uh, as an other KDE distro would be. And the same thing, PC Linux OS has a GNOME version. So, but it's I don't really recommend it for people who want GNOME desktop. I recommend more on the Ubuntu line. I I do recommend Mint over Ubuntu. Um, but the main difference here in the Linux community is, I mean, B.R. Tidwell is, has valid reasons. He's using Ubuntu and GNOME because it's what he's used to and it's how his mind thinks. I'm using PC Linux and KDE because it makes more sense to how my mind thinks. When it comes to choosing which desktop environment you're going to operate in, that should be the primary determining factor. Uh, and this is why I say it's kind of a microchasm between KDE and GNOME. Um, I hope you don't mind me expanding the topic, B.R. Tidwell, but it's, this is a valid, you know, second thing to expand on other than just distros, you know, desktops. 
because uh, that plays a part in this. And at the end of the day, your determining factor should be how does your mind think? How does your mind want to use this thing? That is the most valid argument I have ever heard. Uh, the ones that are most well supported and the most well developed are KDE and GNOME. Uh, I, I, the others are getting there. Uh, not to insult them or anything, it's just they're not quite there yet. And not that that doesn't necessarily mean they don't suit your needs. Um, so, that's on that. Uh, so, so there's one other thing he said. Uh, uh, I'm going to have to go pause and watch his video. I'll be right back. I'll... Okay, that's what it is. Where he was talking about uh, Linux Mint versus Ubuntu. Um, this is another little philosophical disagreement within the Linux community. Uh, which is one school of thought is that a distro should help guide a novice. You know, at the end of the day, computers are a tool and are meant to be very user-friendly. And the other school of thought is Linux is probably the most module, a Linux operating system is probably the most modular thing you could have. It's, you can get a well-defined Linux distribution under 100 megabytes that depending what you're doing and what the device is, you may have everything you could possibly need. But you do that by cutting out every single thing you don't need. And Linux is really the only OS for applications like this. That's, you, you cannot get there with others. The second closest would be something like OS X, but that's, you can't do that with an OS X you can buy off the shelf. That, that, that's Apple using the fact that OS X is based on Unix in the same way you know Linux has similar bases. Um, so it's like, and that's how Linux is built. It's the core, and then which is the Linux kernel, which is what makes it Linux, and then other things are built on top of it that make a full OS. Um, some people find what I consider to be more user-friendly distros, which I think for the average end user put the best foot forward for Linux. Um, the average user is not an uber geek. The average user never wants to screw with anything on their computer. The average user just wants the darn thing to run. Which is why I recommend Mint over Ubuntu. But he has a perfectly valid argument there, which is when you do that, there's a little bit of a trade-off in that you're partially being guided down a path. Not, not forced to walk it. I mean, at the end of the day, you can still open terminal on any Linux machine and do anything you want. If it's not in the repository or package manager for that Linux distro, you can add stuff on. Uh, to have the most options in this, I actually recommend going with either a Debian or Madriva based uh, distro. Because uh, RPMs, and I want to say SRCs, uh, I think is what Debian uses. It's been a while since I've actually had to install one, so I forget if I've misnamed it, I'm sorry. But uh, odds are, the pre bundled packages, that's what they'll be in. So, you know, you won't really need technical skills, you just have to know which flavor you have. Ubuntu is based on Debian, PC Linux is loosely based on Madriva, so it's, that's the thing. So, that's the thing. Um, you know, response topics on that, if anyone wants to ex expand this conversation more on yours, and um, what are your thoughts on uh, BR Tidwell on what... You know, what school of thought's best? And I know you prefer, but be, for, for the average user, which one do you think's best? And, um, you know, stuff like that. So, okay, peace out.